All right. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Connect with the Leslie's. Yay! <laughs> I'm here this afternoon with Leslie's Avenue. I'm really happy. And I have to tell you just something um, that makes me, it's just a little thing that makes me happy. I've never worked anywhere with someone who also <laughs> has my name. So that's super cool. And because um, I have someone that, you know, um, the calls get confused and I actually get some of Leslie's phone calls and that's kind of exciting. I don't know if you ever get any of mine. I do. Sometimes you do. get some of her calls too, <laughs> but I usually know right away that, that they're for this lesson. <laughs> I do too, because I, I can't always answer those for you. <laughs> so anyway, um, today we're going to talk, uh, I'll, um, we'll follow the same format as Connect with Leslie in the past. We, you know, I'll talk a little bit about what highlights, I guess, from the board meeting, a little bit about what's going on at IHLS, and then I'm going to turn it over to Leslie, and she'll be talking about all the amazing things we'd like to share with you uh, about e-resources and that ever-changing, evolving um, world. Okay, and again, uh, any questions, just type them in the chat box, right, Julia? And also, if someone wants to talk, we'll, we'll be, they'll be able to do that, they might. Yes? Yes, okay. So we had our board meeting last evening, and um, it, uh, unlike our meeting in February, which was a little exciting because we had quite a bit of hail in a very short time in Eversville, <laughs> That, this was not eventful in, in terms of the weather. And um, the board approved um, its consent agenda. It did approve the bill payments and um, accept the financial reports. It also, um, we also discussed um, a couple things that are really uh, exciting and we're really happy um, for one library district in particular. Um, I was able to share with the board that the Mississippi Valley Library District there in Collinsville, Illinois, their Fairmont City uh, Library Center was very recently announced as the recipient of the Library Aware Community Award that is uh, announced by Library Journal and it is um, underwritten by Novelist, which is a product available from, I mean, Library Aware, which is a product uh, available by no Novelist. And uh, to quote the, pre the presentation press release, um, they were selected because they demonstrated their ability to make the community aware of what the library can do for them. I don't know if anybody from that library is on our call. I didn't catch all the names that came up in the chat box. Um, but having lived in this area, in the general area where Fairmont City is, that library, I can attest, has made a significant change in that community. And um, everyone is the better for it. So woohoo to um, Fairmont City Library Center. Uh, and um, also, I didn't ask you, Julia, uh, so w while we have a list of who's attended, we can send out links to different things we've talked about, correct? Julia loves being put on the spot, <laughs> in case you haven't figured that one out, so. I can send the information through L2. It doesn't come across as links, I don't believe. Okay. But so maybe we can if you have something that you want to go out to everybody, I could put it in the moving forward. Okay, that maybe we'll have a little condensed piece of information there. That's great. Um, other things we talked about um, is the um, IHLS is currently and, and will continue to encourage members to focus on federal funding right now and through the promotion of the American Library Association's Dear Appropriation, Appropriator Letter Campaign. This is something that ALA has been doing for a while where they have champions in the House of Representatives who uh, reach out and contact their peers in the House and um, through that there's broad bipartisan support for um, um, in both um, across that legislative body and it sends a strong message to that influential um, appropriations committee as they're considering budgets and this year is especially um, important that we all participate in that and so this is something that we will be sending out to you we'll get it to you some way we may have already sent it out to you i believe it's been posted on social media as well yep um so the way this dear appropriator um letter campaign works there's two different programs that are on the table where I, some people may say they're off the table. I'm gonna say they're still on the table, but we definitely want them funded. One is the Library Services and Technology Act funding. Um, that is something we all enjoy. 
Uh, we all benefit from that. If you get library delivery from um, either the Reaching Across Libraries, uh, Illinois Library System or library delivery from Illinois Heartland Library System, you're benefiting from LSDA funding because that's supported through the Illinois State Library directly. So um, that's one obvious thing that we can all point to. Um, another, um, another program is the Innovative Approaches to Literacy Program. It's also known as IAL. And that's a grant program that's administered by the U.S. Department of Education. And it's also authorized by the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, as we call it. So those two programs um, are essential. And those are what are um, part of this. They are the, the objectives of this um, appropriator letter campaign. So um, we'll be sending you um, information about that. And so we talked quite a bit about that at the board meeting last night. And then also on a system level note, this Friday, March 31st, marks the last day for all of us who work with Steve Johnson. He works out currently out of our Carbondale office. He's also worked out of our Carter Rural office. Then he worked out of our um, DeCoin office. He's been with um, either Shawnee Library System or Illinois Heartland Library System for 37 years. And we wish him well as he moves on um, into the a new stage in his life. He's retiring and we wish him all the best. So, um, so that's a happy sad, more of a happy thing for him, <laughs> definitely for Steve. Um, okay, um, the Illinois State Library is um, a representative always joins our meeting and Greg McCormick, the acting deputy director, Last night also discussed the federal budget and a proposal and the Institute for Museum and Library Services. Um, and again, they, you know, we discussed the, how the elimination of the, that department at the federal level would impact the state. And he also included other programs that are um, funded by um, LSDA funding. Uh, again, in Illinois, the talking book and Braille service is, is funded by that. So. Um, we all have reasons to be very active at this time um, and reaching out um, to those that work at the federal level, those, those elected officials. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, <laughs> hope I'm not going too fast. We had a report from the nominations committee and if you haven't seen it um, in your email or you haven't seen something on our, um, on our webpage, the voting is now open for five positions on our board. We have a 15 member board. The positions are three years in duration. So every year we have five positions um, that are up for election. The polls opened in the middle of March and they'll remain open through April 15th. At the beginning of this week, we had approximately 20% of our members participating. That's great. We have around 520 member libraries. So we need more than 100 libraries to participate. We'd like to see more of that. You'll be starting to get also more um, messages from us in more and hopefully creative ways to you all as well. Oh, look, Julie's put, putting stuff up on the, on the notes. Great. Oh, and that's a link to the, the ballot information. So um, you'll be hearing, you'll be seeing that more. And unfortunately, if you've already voted, we can't opt you out of those messages. So <laughs> you're just going to keep getting them. But it's a good reminder. Also, um, our board, um, our organization's annual meeting will be held um, June 20th at our Carbondale location. And we pick one of our hubs every year. This year it's gonna be at Carbondale. And it, our annual meeting begins at 4 a.m. 4, 4 <laughs> no, 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 4 p.m. Thank you. And it's followed by at five o'clock by our board meeting proper. So we look forward to seeing all of you there. Under new business at the board meeting, um, the board approves some revisions to our personnel code. They were in section seven, which is the travel section. The changes that we made were a direct um, reflection um, of the local government travel expense control act, which is 50 ILCS 150. So if you work in a public library, um, you are probably very aware of the Travel Expense Control Act that was um, recently enacted. I think it came out at the beginning of January this year in Illinois. So we had to make some slight changes um, in wording um, just to reflect that. So because the board enacted that um, 
a resolution to support that at our February meeting. So we wanted to keep everything um, in line with that. The, um, like I said, we did talk a little bit about the, a little bit more about the federal funding. And I'd like to share with you that at our member day, so there's a plug for member day, one of our activities um, where we reach out to all of our members um, and trustees as well of public libraries. It's member, it's April 18th. It's located, it will be located at the convention center in Effingham. There is no charge, I'm correct. Yep, no okay. charge. Lunch is included. It begins at, at registration begins at 8.30. 8 or 8.30. 8 or 8.30? Okay. <laughs> Sometime in there. And then um, the meeting begins at 9 or 9.30. <laughs> yes, we're not the place for accurate. I'm not the place for um, absolute accurate information. However, Julie is going to put up a link to it, I think, in L2 where you can register and you can also find out more information. Oh, is she good? It's like we're telepathically connected and there's no wires. I'm not wearing <laughs> any wires. So, um, but, you know, Member Day this year as part um, is not entirely focused on advocacy, but there's a strong component of advocacy. And we are, um, because that's where our organization is, that's where our board is right now, is at advocacy. And it's not a one-year project, it's a multi-year project. And so this is a great opportunity for us to um, broaden that discussion. And so at Member Day, we're going to be um, looking at resources and tools and um, success stories really of how others have implemented that in their communities, different types of library communities. And so we'll de you'll definitely be hearing more about that at Member Day and at other opportunities with us as well. And I just have a couple more things to note about the board meeting. Last night was also the, the last evening for two uh, members who are stepping, stepping down from the board. Mary Bartow is a school librarian. She's been on our board for two years. She is with the Belleville West School Dist High School District. She's, um, she'll be leaving um, that school district um, at the end of this year, she's retiring. And so she stepped down from our board last night, it was her last evening with us. And also, um, so if you may also know Rachel Fuller, she uh, stepped down from our board last, evening as she's accepted a position with a different library. And although it is a Eleanor Hartman Library System member, she won't be in a position to uh, represent us or represent that library on our board. So we wish Rachel all success moving forward in another chapter of her life as well as Mary Martell. So it was great to spend some time with both of them last night and we wish them happy, happy years ahead. Okay. So now, a couple things I'd like to share with you about what's happening with the system that we haven't already talked about. Then, so member day, April 18th, if May 2nd um, is our next members matter meeting. It will be at Alney Public Library. I think Julia is gonna put something up about that. <laughs> if you could see her face, it's just, it's great. She's having a lovely day. Um, I think she's always happy when I'm in the building. Yeah. She's smiling. Uh, so we'll be at Alney um, on video conference and it will also be um, a video conference at the Illinois State Library. And then everyone else is also um, more than happy, I mean, more than welcome to join us by Zoom like you all are today. So that's going on. And the last thing, and Julia cannot put this up, at least it's not a link in L2, <laughs> is <laughs> Reaching For Itself, that conference will be held next Friday. And I think she could find that link. <laughs> we should really practice. Okay, um, it's April 7th, and we held that on the campus of Eastern Illinois University in Charleston. And now, without further ado, <laughs> I welcome my partner and, and happy, 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 um, good information about libraries, uh, Leslie Zabaduke, and she's here to tell us all about your research. Greetings. <laughs> so one of the main reasons I'm here is also just as a reminder that I'm the person at the system that you want to call if you have any questions about e-resources, if you don't know what e-resources are, if you do know what they are, or if you hear of a really cool one that you don't know anything about and you want to see like what pricing is or could IHLS maybe get a group purchase or a vendor discount, 
send me information at any time and always feel free to call or email me with questions. You can find me on the website and I'm extension 424. Um, so a couple of the things I wanted to talk about today are just some of the stuff that is available to all IHLS members um, in regards to e-resources. So one of those things you probably are all familiar with, and that's the vendor discount page on the IHLS website. And I bet Julia will put a link up to that in the chat. <laughs> um, we are trying more and more to get put up more information about e-resources on that vendor discount page as well. Uh, so right now you'll find vendor discounts for uh, EBSCO, a product that they offer that's called Flipster, which is digital magazines. Um, you'll find a couple of Demco software products that offer vendor discounts. One is Brain HQ, uh, which is a way that you can foster adult learning for your adult patrons. Um, sign up, which is like an event calendaring e-resource for libraries. Um, and then there are a couple of other ones. Uh, I'm going to keep trying to add those to the vendor discount page um, as we become aware of them. Many of those discounts are offered statewide and all of the discounts on that page are offered to all IHLS members, uh, whether or not you're in share. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Of course, sometimes there are caveats to that. So some vendors, the discount structure for school libraries is different than it is for public libraries. Some e-resources are only offered to a certain type of library, um, but that's always a good place to check for vendor discounts. We're always updating that page. And usually when I put new e-resource vendor discounts on there, um, I try to let Julia know so it goes in the MFT and I also sometimes send out information about it. So that's just a reminder, look there, e-resources are going to be there and hopefully more will be there soon. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about that is available to all IHLS members um, that I think most people are aware of, but I just wanted another reminder and I'm not sure if everyone is. Um, we do do a group purchase of Zinio through recorded books. Zinio is digital magazines that your patrons can check out. What that means is they can download an app onto a device of their choosing. Then they can view our collection of e-magazines and then uh, check those out and view them on their app. It's a really nice feature because when patrons download magazines, there isn't actually a loan period. Once they download it, they can access it as long as they want. Um, and it's available to all IHLS members. We actually have two groups in IHLS for Zinio. We have one for school libraries. Um, that consortium has access to a group bundle of titles. Um, so we don't get to pick and choose which titles each school can view, um, but there is a nice group of titles. I think it's 25 at a wide range of levels for our schools. Uh, and then our public library group has access to, I believe, 76 titles as of right now. Um, and that runs on the fiscal year and we're getting ready to do renewals. So if you're a library that doesn't use Zinio and you want to know more information or you want me to get you a quote, feel free to email me and I can get you that information. Um, and it's a good time because July 1st will be starting a new year. So I have lots of time to get you that information um, and for you to make a decision. So that's the one that's offered to all IHLS members as far as e-resources go and group purchases. We're also working on looking into more of those possibilities. So as soon as we have another opportunity like that, we'll send it out to all of you. Great. And then the final thing I wanted to talk about, and Leslie may add a little bit to this, I don't know. Um, Leslie asked me to talk a little bit about trends in e-resources. Um, and I didn't really have a trend to talk about per se, but there is something sort of going on in the background of the e-resource world. As many of you know, if you subscribe to an ebook platform for your patrons, libraries often pay more for ebooks than what a consumer pays. So when a library purchases an ebook, sometimes I pay $85 a copy, especially for a best selling author, <laughs> where you could go to Amazon and purchase that same book for $15.99. That makes it really hard with small library budgets to keep an e-collection growing. Another thing that makes it very hard is for vendors or publishers who don't charge a lot of money per copy, uh, they restrict how many times we can use that ebook. So some publishers will say, you can buy an ebook and I'll let you circulate it for one year. After that, it's going to disappear and you have to buy it again. Or the worst one <laughs> is that they'll say, I'm going to sell you an ebook and you can circulate it 26 times. And after that, it's going to disappear and you will have to buy a new copy. 
So for the last few years, libraries have really been pub are pressuring publishers that we need a new model because that's not sustainable for us. And we actually help publishers because we help patrons discover new authors. And then our patrons go out and buy more copies of those books. Um, so something that's kind of come to a head in the last couple of years is that the Copyright Office has agreed that the copyright rules in regards to e-content really need to be looked at and possibly revised again. So it's something they've been talking about for a couple of years. I don't know where they are in the procedure, um, but because that has kind of been the discussion and it's on their docket, I guess you could say, um, several library uh, groups, consortiums, have kind of banded together and written a letter, if you will, in support of the Copyright Office sort of revising how libraries are allowed to use e-content. This would help us because it would hopefully bring e-book pricing down for libraries and possibly pressure publishers to make those circulation restrictions, if not completely gone, a little bit more workable for us with our budgets. Um, so IHLS is actually going to sign on as a supporter of that letter. That's where Leslie comes in. <laughs> um, so they're going to, we'll have a resolution for the board to make it official, and then we'll sign on as an official signator. But all of you, just as individual people, can also sign on to that letter. Um, and I should have given the link to Julia ahead of time, and I did not, so I apologize, Julia. But I will put it in the, I'll write a blurb, and I'll put it in the next MFT so that it gets out to everybody. Um, so you can read through the letter, you can sign in if you want. Um, it's just a little background piece in the world of e-content that libraries would like to change. And the only way that maybe we can change it is if we all work together. So the groups that have signed on already are from all over the states. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's a worthy cause for us. So I wanted to, that's my e-resource trend of the day. Does anybody have any questions about e-resources? While we're waiting for folks to type, I have a, a, just a comment to add on to that. So I was talking to the library director just this week, and their, their question was, well, their dilemma, I think, is shared by a lot of other libraries. Um, so we've got this group of vendors that does exactly that. They sell us uh, certain copies for a certain length of time, and then we have these that do the right. checkouts for a certain length of time. But we've invested money in this group, right? and we don't want to lose that content. If we go, you know, if we change to another model or if we decide right. to go to like a cloud, not this cloud model that a share <laughs> group has or whatever. And it is, a, it is a dilemma. And when we're faced with limited tax dollars and um, we have to use them in the, um, the best way possible to impact as many patrons as we can, right. our library supporters, um, it's... <laughs> it's a toss-up. I mean, and 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 we all and we all face those um, on a regular basis. So I, I, the more of us that can be active in this and um, more well-read about this topic, when we talk to vendors, we can make a dip, we can make an impact. And right. this is how you, uh, several years ago in Illinois, when and um, Leslie knows very well about this because she worked with that project, the um, eRead Illinois project started from that exact type of conversation how do yep. we change how do we move this because these are resources that move not through not through physical delivery um they should move across um they should move easier and so now they are moving easier at least in a consortium model right um so the next step is really how how can we push publishers a little more right. to be able, you know open that up a little and and um be more willing to consider their pricing formulas or right. structures. And copyright is a very boring topic. So sometimes it can be hard to read about, um, but I think for eBooks it's an important one. And the letter that um, this group of libraries has come up with is very uh, simple and in layman's terms, why we need change as far as copyright and e-content and how libraries are allowed to loan it. So um, we'll make sure that we get that out. Sounds great. Um, okay. So we talked a lot, we talked really fast. And we're, <laughs> we're still within our time frame. Yeah. Uh, Julie's laughing. Does anyone have any questions or something they would like to share? You can put it in the chat, but if you have a mic, just go ahead and click on your mic and you can unmute yourself. And then that way we can hear someone else. It's much easier than typing in the chat box. <laughs> Leslie, I did do a short poll and it was in, in 
this month have you contacted your legislator and this was uh -huh. whenever you were doing the board report we did have four people that said yes all right fabulous that's a start that's definitely a start and um advocacy like everything else is a practice and it it does is not um it's intimidating if you've never done it before and i will own up to that because in the beginning um of doing um, myself i've been intimate i you think i like to talk actually i don't <laughs> <laughs> nobody believes me i don't know why but seriously i mean it's it's different when you're faced with someone that um they're an elected official um, in your community, in the state, uh, at the national level, but they're still human beings. And there are lots of ways to make your point, uh, to share information with them um, and, and put it on a level that they can relate to. And there are a lot of ways to do that and to be more comfortable with it. Uh, one of the most effective ways is going with a friend, going with a buddy or with a mentor. Um, we actually did that this week in our office with some of our staff and it was very effective. And um, that's just, you know, just another reminder that that, that really works well. And um, so that, that's one of the things we'll be, you know, hopefully um, modeling or um, role playing when we get to Effingham in a couple of weeks. Okay. Well, it's been wonderful, everyone. And actually, we still have three minutes. If anyone wants to share something. <laughs> Usually we go over. Yeah. Does anyone have anything they want to share that's special going on at their library? I'm not sure if Leslie and Leslie are frozen. Nope, they're just being quiet and still. I will add before we sign off, if you need to call Leslie and you accidentally get me, I will get you to Leslie and she will do uh, this. <laughs> We're happy to switch. Um, there's a question oh. about or a comment about printer problems. So I'll let you talk about it directly. I just want to say we have a staff member who works in Edwardsville. His name is Brandon, and he is fabulous. He also has a wonderful sense of humor. He so he's been um, dealing with this issue um, in the most professional way, and he's handling the stress of it all very well. Yes. Yeah, so if you are having printer problems, um, I would talk to Brandon, call the office. He's not as busy on the phone as he was when the printer problems first started. So if he is on the phone, we'll usually transfer you. And if you leave him a voicemail, he will call you back the same day. Um, he's also really working to make sure all printer problem information is updated on the SHARE website. And I believe he sent out an email this morning that said he may have kind of come to a solution. So I know, I can't remember exactly what the email said, but I know he had fixed some of the problems and was hopeful that everyone was printing a little easier now. So he wanted to know if you aren't printing any easier, let him know. And if you are, that's great. Um, and if you're very frustrated and you've thrown your computer out the window, Brandon empathizes with you very much. That was, a, that was my favorite one. I was <laughs> not in the building and I was reading on my phone. I'm like, oh, this is terrific. This, I mean, we've all faced that with our with automation software. Yes, and Julia put Brandon's extension in the chat. It is 440. Or if you press zero, any of us who answer will transfer you to him and we give him cookies and candy regularly because he helps us a lot too. <laughs> That's right. Great. Oh, that's exciting. Really? So Linda, what library are you at? I'm, I'm not familiar. Trenton, I think. Okay. Wonderful. We might, um, Okay, that's next Thursday. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. That's the kind of information we'd love to know. Leslie, in, set, in case someone is not looking at the chat box, uh, mm -hmm. Linda at Trenton is saying that a member from Shimkus's office is coming to their library on April 6th for questions and concerns from the community. All right. Right, sorry, we should have read that. We just read it on the screen. We read it. <laughs> We were frozen, Julia. We were playing frozen. Just kidding. No, so thank you, Linda. Um, we'll do our best to send someone there. 
one of uh, a couple of our staff. It's not that far from at least our Eversville office. No, nope. definitely. And um, that would be a good opportunity. I hope you have um, quite a few folks from your community there as well. 3.30. Got awesome. It. Uh, so another reminder, if you have that kind of information, um, regardless of the rep uh, or, you know, I mean state, federal, local, we'd be happy to attend if we can. We are a little limited by geography, so we had determined in-house that uh, we, will well, we will work out of each of our offices, Champaign, Carbondale, and Eversville, and attend as many as we can in our semi-regional area. And we will, you just gotta let us know. Well, thank you. All right, well, you made the full half hour. <laughs> so if well, no, thank you all. Thank you very much. All right. Oh wait, there's one more. All right. Have a good afternoon. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.